All right, we're ready to go, man. It's three minutes, and I'm still just talking to myself. Um, we put. <laughs> you gotta sit here. Okay. It's too awkward. Like if that. you're sitting here, like <laughs> you have to look back and forth. It looks just weird. No, it doesn't. All right, it doesn't look weird. I don't like it. <laughs> All right, everything's good. Good question. That's so weird. Like the, ca- it's it's an optical illusion. What's uh, that? That camera looks so. Awful. Oh yeah, like it's tilt. Oh, it's because the yeah, maybe because the, the the screen isn't flat. Yeah. Wild does look like it's angled. <laughs> Arizona is a wildly beautiful place. Brimming with over 100 brewing companies. I'm Rob Fulmer, the executive director of the Arizona Craft Brewers Guild. I'm joined by deputy director Andrew Bauman, Together, we cover the state, bringing you the best of what's happening at our breweries and beyond. Welcome to Arizona Beer Frontier. Well, we had so much intro already. I don't even <laughs> no, know. No, there's no go. intro, man. Uh, it was just me talking no about <laughs> telling, a, telling a story about growing up in Wisconsin. Oh, I was also from Milwaukee. Oh, you are? Yeah. yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. My fiance is too. Uh-huh. So. Yeah. I moved here in 84. Oh. oh, okay. I know. I'm super old. <laughs> never guess. Never yeah. guess, but it's I'm true. I'm guessing that your fiance wasn't even born in any times that we talked about. Oh, this. certainly not. <laughs> <laughs> She's originally from Wisconsin, Milwaukee? Yeah, no. Mequon. Mequon. Uh, see, that's not Milwaukee. Though. Nah. Well. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. I. It's the same thing when you're like, oh, yeah, I'm from Chicago. And they're like <laughs> two hours out of Chicago. Yeah. I'm like, no, no. You don't get credit for Chicago <laughs> just because you... Live in Illinois. You, yeah, no. When we were, uh, when we both lived there and obviously didn't know each other, yep. uh, he was a lifeguard at the park that my grandparents would take us to, to oh, go swimming wow. at. Yeah. <laughs> so Small kind world. of the same area. I should just, for old times, say, little boy, please don't run on the deck. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Rob. Andrew Bauman. Should we get going? No. We have a guest here today. <laughs> Would you like to introduce yourself? Yeah, I'm Jeff Watkins. I'm a founder of Proper Pack, where we sell properly recyclable paper can carriers to Arizona microbreweries. Did you do that to yourself? Do you make yourself do a bunch of alliteration there? Proper Pack? Yeah, what, what? properly recyclable. You yeah, see what we're kind of doing yeah. there. It's a yeah. tongue twister. Yeah, I don't yeah. know if I can get that off. Got a okay. few reps in now. So. <laughs> <laughs> right. It's a lot of peas. Good thing we have a pop screen on the microphone. Yeah. <laughs> Whew. All right. Um, so, what does that what does that mean? What does that mean to people who buy things in the store? What What do you do that they would see you know? What What do they know about you? What What thing do you have that they would? How does this relate? To, where's the beer value? That's, that's a long <laughs> long question. Here. Hey, tell us a little bit about your organization and what you do. Yeah. So. We are based out of Phoenix and we sell paper can carriers, like I mentioned, kind of just inspired to sell sustainable packaging to Arizona microbreweries. It's such an awesome space to get to learn and um, meet, meet all the folks that are involved in that as well. So that's kind of the inspiration for the company. Um, started back in 2019 where uh, I had a cousin of mine who started a brewery called Sociable Cider out of Minneapolis. Um, and he approached me, I'd been working in packaging engineering for many years and he approached me and said, why can't anybody make a good paper can carrier? And every day at work, I would make, uh, and design parts for machineries that, uh, would make paper products that are die cut just like this. So it, it really kind of put two and two together and it was some great family connections that kind of led to being able to make a product like this and have been working on it ever since. Cool. Yeah. And you were at ASU. Yeah, I I am uh, in my second year finishing an MBA right now. Cool. So, yep, we'll be taking this uh, full time right after school. So excited to uh, really launch on that adventure. That's amazing. And what makes this? Oh, we have two different parts of it. 
It's not even yeah. just one part. Oh, yeah, okay. so it's a double layer, and that kind of helps with holding a lot of volume. Um, and it's like the little product display there. So it's uh, the back. See, that's where two you can ply tell. construction, and it's built with micro breweries in mind, especially water resistant coating, and that just kind of um, it is very helpful for the canning process. A lot of beer flying around, as you guys know, especially so um, through kind of meeting with a lot of breweries, seeing those kind of operations, doing a lot of trial runs. That's kind of where the product was crafted and we've been continuously iterating that since since 2019, so. Wow. Yeah. yeah. You're a little bit down this road, huh? Yeah, I've been doing this for a while now, so it's that's, been a fun, fun little adventure. That's great, and do you do anything with out-of-state breweries or are you just focused on Arizona because it's more Fo accessible right now? Yeah, focus on Arizona now, you know, Based out of Phoenix, there's so many breweries nearby, and it's just much, much more convenient for kind of accessing and and being there for canning runs, really refining the product and understanding how the process is working, and and just kind of starting to get the name out there. And you brought a couple different filled can holders. Yeah, is that what we Give call them, them? can Give holders. Them. Give I it a mean, try. Yeah, can so carriers. Grand Canyon's Hop Canyon IPA here in a four pack, and it feels solid. You can, yeah, go ahead, shake no, it around. It's, it's and not coming out. It. I don't want to shake them up too much because <laughs> um, you don't like shaking yeah, I, them well, too I much. Actually, <laughs> I might open actually one? be just, yeah. yeah, I might open one. You know, I don't know. I mean, and they, they're cold. We so. do have a couple other similar, not the same products here. Can yeah. you tell us the difference from yours and this? And yeah, so this uh, this is based out of West Rock. That's a very international, massive company, paper um, company, right? Uh, yeah, okay, yeah, they do a lot of corrugated cardboard work, things like that. Um, very massive conglomerate. Um, and here we have E six PR, which is a molded paper board, and they're based out of uh, Mexico City. So handful of breweries using both of those. I see Wilderness with the E6PR. Uh, we were fortunate to Sorry. recently do a trial run with Wilderness as well. So kind of um, given some different options for sustainable packaging for Wilderness. And uh, the Grand Canyon and Moto Sonora cans are a nod to appreciating their hospitality and hosting us for a trial run very early on. And so um, excited to see where that goes. I, I, if I recall, these, these are sometimes really hard to get can out gracefully. Very. Um, <laughs> how, how does? May I? May I? Absolutely. Is it? Go for it. Same thing. Oh no, this is no. way easier. Way easier. <laughs> and what about putting them back in? Yeah, that I, seems. You like know, it. you can. I don't. I don't recommend it for production or whatever. Right. But home use, I do that all the time too. So, yeah. And I've already taken these out once, and I can see some ripping. Now, yours is a. Paper look on the front, paper look on the back. This one is obviously coated on the front and the back. Yeah, there's a plastic coating on both sides of that piece. Um, we're kind of keeping a more traditional paper. Looks looks much more sustainable to everybody. We have a, a camelback topographic design, just really trying to embrace Arizona from there. So, so, so you were saying that potentially because this has a plastic, it might be more difficult to... Uh Recycle, or yeah, that's it right. You would have to depending on where you are. Yeah, you'd have to separate those two materials. It's it's recycled differently in the streams, so kind of a little nuance to the recycling piece. And this, even though it has the white on the back, is not that's paper. Yeah, it just got a coating on it. Yeah, it's it's a it's a clay coat. It's called, and it's the same as any beer box. Your your twenty four okay. pack, whatever, and it's that the glossy look. To yeah, it. Yeah, and you can print uh -huh. on it, and it's much more shiny. That kind of thing, and so, still recyclable. Yes, yes, cool. exactly. Cool. So this is indistinguishable to most municipalities' recyclable program, where right. something like that might get flagged. Sure. Probably not, because I, I don't think our, at least in Tempe, Phoenix. Doesn't seem like they're really all that picky. I know they say they are, but I don't know. It. We were just talking before this. Like, I don't have a real firm grasp of what actually gets recycled and where. A lot of it just gets trucked. Yeah. Somewhere else, and um, for a while, a lot of our stuff was going to China, and then we find out it's going in the ocean and all that other stuff. But like this, this is just gonna. I mean, have you have you have you 
you know, intentionally biodegraded this by just leaving it out in the backyard or you does know, it have I, a life span? Yeah, I've, I've done a little bit of that too, just backyard testing, but I definitely don't want to anchor on how many years it takes to biodegrade. <laughs> no, but, I get it. Uh, yeah, we're working with the sustainability consortium that's based out of ASU. So I'm in a, I'm in a class right now that's um, led by the director of that program. So him and I are kind of working together on figuring out some of the first steps on figuring out biodegradability and, and things like that. But like you touched on, mm -hmm. on kind of the nuances of recycling, we're doing a project right now and it's on small format packaging. So I didn't know prior to this that if anything is smaller than two inches by two inches, it is not recyclable. It is not curbside recyclable. So very small format mm -hmm. pieces, like mm -hmm. you think of a chapstick cap or right. toothpaste tubes, right. you name it. If it's smaller than that two by two, it's not recyclable. So kind of as a part of running this business, I've just learned so much more about recycling and, and small pieces like that as well, because there's a lot of layers to it that I was not aware of prior to this. Now I'm aware of that and I have to go through all of my recyclables because <laughs> yeah. I put a lot of stuff in there that's smaller. There's paper there. <laughs> I, I have noticed that there are some water bottles that now say recycle with cap on. Oh, okay. Yeah. It's probably the same material then. So right. it can be recycled together. Well, that, that was, well, I know that the lid is, that's more than two inches, but like that was my issue when the, the pull hole top off the can came mm. about. Oh, right. Because now you got two pieces and, 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 you know, it's sharp. And, you know, I lived through the whole pop top two piece <laughs> thing and the, they, they, they went to the one piece so that it wouldn't, they wouldn't be all over oh, the place. Oh, that makes a ton of sense. So that's, I was like, and then like the, there was not very many breweries doing it in Arizona. I'm like, if I see that litter, I know it's one of three breweries, you know, sure. and like <laughs> probably more so one of the three. And, you know, it's like, you know, I, I, I think that's something to consider. Um, when we talk about packaging, you know, um, to be able to identify, you know, I, I, I would say I don't see a lot of craft, you know, cans, um, 12 packs just laying out in the street unless, unless, you know, somebody, unless their recycle got knocked over and whatever, but like, right. I do see a lot. I do see a lot of the little, um, Coronitas. No, 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 no. The, the, the oh, fireballs. Fireball oh. <laughs> bottles. Oh my they're God. Everywhere. Right outside of the liquor store. Yeah. It's Cause yeah. they're yeah. everywhere yeah. and those can't in be recycled. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my God. They're less than two by two. You know, oh. you know what I do? I, I would, I would try to get in, involved with a women's, true crime podcasting group yeah. because they will tell you how long this takes to biodegrade, <laughs> especially if it's on, on the scene of a crime. They, they, they have, my wife would probably be like, Oh yeah. The, oh yeah. The, <laughs> they, six weeks. It will be it'll take 27 <laughs> days. If it's in the sun and rain, it'll take 38. Right, but if, if it's, it's buried in the, the ground. <laughs> yeah, no, we like making things up. Uh, so you've been, you've company's been rolling for five years ish. Yeah. And, what are some of the challenges you faced as far as getting the product going? Yeah, great question. I mean, it was many years of, of iterating the product, uh, but it kind of had a stop and start to the, to the business's life cycle. So I, I started this company when I was a junior in undergrad up at University of Minnesota, and it was just an entrepreneurship class, and you had to come up with an idea for a business, mm -hmm. pitch it, and um, try to pitch it to the class to start that business, and then you hired some classmates. So it was a pretty cool class. And at that time is when I kind of got that inspiration from my cousin. So that's where, um, where the company started. And the following year, I was able to win a statewide Minnesota business pitch competition, um, which, which kind of led to thinking that this has some traction. So started on that and then kind of went back to packaging engineering for another year or so. And it wasn't until last year in March that I started this company again, kind of had been working on the MBA for a while and was able to win a new venture challenge competition with ASU. So it's something that's kind of had a lot of continuous good feedback, but some of the challenges are really in reaching out to breweries and trying to get your name in front of, of, of those breweries and get familiar with the process and kind of understand how much the pain point is there for really wanting sustainable packaging and if this is something that, that is filling a good need. 
Um, so it's been a lot of challenges with with iterating the iterating the product and the applicator and making sure that those things are performing correctly because this isn't a business that you can run if the if the package isn't working right. That's that's step right. one. So that's been kind of the biggest challenge to to work through today. Uh, today, I would say. Cool. Um, as far as pricing, what is pricing on one of these versus a plastic can holder? I'm priced right at PackTech. Same. Yes. So the cool. entire anchor of this business model is I want breweries to have the option to switch to sustainable packaging without it being more costly. So I, I feel very strongly that 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 is a significant switching incentive to to give a sustainable packaging option at the same cost as what you're doing now. I, I don't necessarily believe in the higher price associated with sustainable products. I would like everyone to be using sustainable packaging. And I think the, the technology is really there and it is caught up to where paper packaging can perform at or better than plastic. So kind of excited on, on that note. And then as your business grows, is there a potential for even lowering that cost more with Oh, absolutely. Volume and of and we already order or offer volume discounts on things like that as well. So that is certainly a road that I, I envision with the product. Very cool. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm just oh. getting ahead of everyone here. <laughs> I, are we drinking all these beers or <laughs> or just I have no You're not going to make your flight. <laughs> oh, it's tomorrow. <laughs> it's oh, okay. tomorrow. And okay. Yeah. I'll be drinking on the flight. <laughs> Look at that! Another another perfectly poured beer by Rob. I don't know what that is. <laughs> Are these cold? What was that style pour? This I heard you guys um, talking about. Oh, a lucre pour. Yeah, a lucre from a lucre faucet. Milka. Halad, Haladinka. Mm. Haladinka. Halad, yeah. This has been around a little bit. I think I think I'm just gonna have to say that word every podcast to get it right. Good. Yeah. I think you should. Yeah, except I don't know how to say it right. That's nice. I'm going to take this somewhere else. Oh, no, that's no good. I um, think right. we got to drink the I props, given you know. I could have given you a fair warning on that one. <laughs> <laughs> it was part of the field test. It was in the backyard for <laughs> yeah. a while. Um, so uh, we were talking a little bit, too. Um, you know, just picked up on some industry thread. I don't know if it was on Facebook. It might have been Facebook, yeah, right? With the uh, yeah. merchandisers and and. You know, these I, are fresh ones. I, I, I've I've seen um, here. Look, I have even removed this one several times, and it it comes out goes in easy. But I, you know, um, you know that's not a four pack though. That's a little more weight, but yeah, yeah. it works um, uh, for home use. Yeah, but like, but you know, a lot of retailers reuse these, um, especially the independent places. They probably wouldn't reuse this, um, and that's not the intention. I, mm -hmm. I wouldn't think. Um, nevertheless, they I mean, as so. soon as you get a hundred percent of the market, we're going to have a problem. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, people reuse the pack text, but th those fail on second use sometimes. Yeah. Especially um, depending on which version of the pack text you're using. Yeah. Um, but, uh, th there were some merchandisers saying, Hey, well, you know, if this, if, if, if you have a problem, then it really kind of messes their day up and you know, I'm, I'm, I'm sympathetic, but I also know that they're pretty resilient. They're, for something like this, it wouldn't be it'd be trivial to have a bunch of these laying around in their truck or sure. or or in the, so thin, the back man. storehouse. They could just be hanging up on a hook. Um, I know it's not their favorite thing, but it's it's not as terrible, I, I think, as it was presented. Um, but also, also probably uh, some of them are mistreated by the distributor if they get to the point where they're failing. From yeah. the truck, you know, and it's and it's not an issue too because you see the build your own six packs in every grocery store as well. Yeah, and those are the big cartons, and so you know something like this that can take up less floor space and achieve the same purpose is absolutely <laughs> something that can just be held. Yeah, up. I was gonna say maybe there's an in, but like no, no, I'm sure the distributors pay for all that. <laughs> 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 there's, <laughs> they're fries isn't gonna buy these. <laughs> go, hey, no, no. Get us your most luxurious four pack and six pack holders, <laughs> yes, Mister Distributor. Please. please make them out of mylar, <laughs> the least recyclable thing on earth. Yeah, no, but so cool looking. <laughs> um, but they, yeah, you're, you're right. They do, and they do. They used to do bottle carriers. Remember that? That's not too long ago. They still do that. Do they? I think oh, it's yeah. the same ones because you know, cans people fit in there and, and bottles yeah. fit in there. Okay, this shows you how long it's been since I put together a 
six pack or a BYO in a, in a <laughs> grocery store. Yeah, a couple days. You always have access to beer. <laughs> <laughs> I went and bought non-alcoholic beer mm -hmm. because, well, I don't want to drink alcohol all the time, but I do want to drink beer all the time. It works. Yeah, uh, maybe I bet that. That is, I mean, they generally use cartons, Athletic does, for all of their stuff mm -hmm. because they are definitely into sustainability. Right. They sell quite a little bit of beer. <laughs> They're massive, yeah. <laughs> so there's a lot of detail in this print, and, and your QR code works. It's very tiny, very tiny. It still worked pretty well, <laughs> which is, which is you know, um, you know, good. Um, so, I mean, obviously, is it, it's cheaper to do one color. Um yeah, mm -hmm. you know, and, and I'll say this is this is my designs, the, right. the company proper pack designs. Mm -hmm. uh, where this product is going is something where breweries can build their own custom print for this. And it's something that can carriers really don't have a, a customizable branding element to kind of let it pop out on the shelves to customers. And it's something that this is going to be a great vehicle for letting breweries to increase their branding on stuff like that and make some really unique looks. So it's really a placeholder design. It's something that I will offer, but I'm really excited about the custom print because of how much differentiation mm -hmm. we can get with that being a sustainable product that's also customizable to breweries, kind of opening up some different lanes that weren't achievable before. Yeah, I just think, you know, with the... I mean, that's like what? A thousandth of the entire surface area of yeah. the QR code. So it gives you a lot of options, especially now that I guess QR codes are back and we might need them for federal labeling and all that other stuff. Um, but you can you can definitely have a more customizable um, message. If, if this is your entirety of your packaging, um, you still have another option with this. And, right, and there's still, uh, e even though it looks tiny, there's an impressive amount of data that you can put on this using QR codes. And, you know, again, the level of point, um, the font is still pretty clear. Um, and you can also on there. advertise something like brewery events that you have or will be hosting soon on, right. on a vehicle, something like this. So that's kind of a, a cool option. And, I, I don't even know all, all the different creative ways that you can get into with custom packaging, but I know it's going to be something that's really exciting. So for the designers out there, I'm sure you have some sort of illustrator template or something like that. Absolutely. To with. Yep. Okay. And uh, again, are, are, are all colors on the map? I don't, what is the process for printing? Is, is any, yep. any, any Pantone they can throw at you, you can do it? Yeah, we have a, a wide, wide um, array of colors and you can print multiple colors on the pack as well. You can print on the other side for a more vibrant looking print, mm -hmm. but it's something that we can absolutely walk through the process and kind of build a custom print design together. So are you currently working with anybody right now or? Yeah, we've been supplying desert monks since last May. Okay. Um, so they've been an awesome connection to kind of learn more about the product, see how it holds up. And we've gotten some great feedback on stuff like that as well. Mm -hmm. uh, we did a trial run with Wilderness in January that we're still working together with. We did the Salt River Saison for them. Mm -hmm. um, we just recently did a canning run with Moto Sonora mm -hmm. and last year with Grand Canyon. So uh, bringing those cans were kind of a, a nod to appreciating their <laughs> help as well. Yeah. Um, but m many others as well, but just kind of getting started. Andrew, when you package at Uncle Bear's, you use PackTech? Mm -hmm. And I mean, I don't know anything about that process. These are all hand put together. You have machine. PackTech you can put on without an applicator. Um, it's not very efficient. And let me tell you, that guy at the end of the day is not very happy. No, I bet. I bet. All day long. I mean, repetitive motion industry. But he's got a firm handshake injuries. on yeah. Monday, though. <laughs> Ooh, maybe, <laughs> or maybe he still has ice. On a grip <laughs> trainer, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so, what is what is the process for this? Is, how, yeah. does, it, does it work with anything that that's out there? So, we apply these with an applicator that uh, we've engineered. So, it's a very cheap applicator. It's three hundred, and it's um, designed to kind of keep up with the same speeds as what you're producing off of the canning line. Um, but it's a very simple process of putting the cans in snap down a pack and move on to your tray. So adding one little piece to the process where it's not 
put on by hand. Um, but really the exciting lane for where we're going with this is automatic application. And we should have a machine done by June, which will be the first iteration of automatic application mm -hmm. for this product. And I really want to mitigate that issue of the person at the end of the canning, canning line having an awful day snapping on pack text by hand all day. Yeah. <laughs> so I, this, this is a machine that can go up to 60 cans a minute at a price point of ten dollars to $15,000 based on first couple estimates. So an extremely affordable option for breweries that can speed up canning line productions and also hopefully reduce some of that burnout of whoever's at the end of the canning line having a not so great Friday or whatever, whatever right. it is on a canning run. Yeah. So try um, and, 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 you know, warehousing these, I mean, I, oh. I know pack techs are small, but they're not that small. I mean, I, I during the pandemic, I amassed quite a collection <laughs> just, you know, so if you're into that, but you that know, could be oh. like 30 of them, right? Imagine how many of it's those you can incredibly fit. efficient. Yeah. Cause like we can that, stack. I'm these. guessing 30 is right about oh. there. Absolutely. And we can stack so many end on end. There's, next to no wasted space on the pallet as well. We can fit 45,000 units on a pallet. So it's something that's going to significantly cut down your footprint of what you're holding for packaging as well. Right. Um, so why, why just craft beer? Are you looking at other um, beverage options? Yeah, yeah I, I am. But, you know, craft beer is, is such a well-defined and approachable market and nod to you guys for making it very approachable and, having festivals and those kind of natures where it's easy to get out and, and meet some of the players that are involved with that. But, you know, ultimately we'll be looking into kind of any canned beverage, but, mm -hmm. you know, at the beginning, um, focusing on who really resonates with sustainability and who very evidently is going to be interested in things like that. So not just, not just craft breweries, but it's, it's such a great market. As mm -hmm. to how approachable and inviting it is. Hmm. Hmm. So what what is the one milestone in in forming this business that resonates with you the most? And like, what did it take you to achieve that? Oh man, I, you know, I would have to say having our first customer um, last May. That's kind of what it's all about: being able to build a product and inspire that that's the right solution and the right way to go uh, and have a brewery that believes in you with their own dollars. I don't think it really gets better than that in terms of an endorsement of the company. And it's kind of a nod to all of the years of work since 2019, innovating the product, developing applicators, getting the message out, learning more about breweries, phone calls, emails, trial runs, you name it. But there's a lot, a lot of learning that's involved in that step. And I think that was kind of the biggest milestone. Cool. Cool. What was your undergrad in? I did entrepreneurial management, believe it or not. So, right. yeah. Um, and then I worked in packaging engineering for eight years before this. We mm -hmm. built uh, machinery to make microwave popcorn bags. So the the paper roll stock that's involved in just your everyday microwave packaging. So a whole lot of paper engineering experience <laughs> before this uh, and kind of really excited to run a company based off of that as well. So um, I would say the most fun part about it is uh, my dad is actually the supplier for this product. <laughs> so every day we get to work so closely together on innovating the product and the process and he he owns his own business as well. It's something that I've always wanted to do. So I'm really excited that we both get to be running our own business and working together still. So that's kind of one of the most fun parts about this. So you don't use Verative to make these? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> um, so you, you, the microwave popcorn bag. So, no, I mean, I, I, this is interesting because uh, yeah. I knew an engineer um, worked in plastics. Okay. And he was on the team that designed the um, the Heinz bottle that's upside oh. down, you know, like the sure. squeeze bottle and like the, the whole shape of it. Yeah. And, you know, I mean, that's got a lot more um, to it. 
It's uh, because all the corners matter to, to create the structural integrity. integrity. If, if you've if you drank out of a water bottle in the last couple of years, you've noticed that they've gotten thinner and thinner, and they've been able to um, cut down on the plastic. Mm-hmm. Um, but all those ridges matter, and, and they all have a function. So, like, there's kind of an evolution, right? Um, and I'm not saying – I mean, this you have fewer degrees of freedom to mess around with. I mean, you know, um, is there – can you tell me a little bit about – uh, the engineering behind this? I mean, is this multiple layers of paper that are just sort of bonded? Yeah, or? so if you see on the side, there's a little perforation. Yeah. And that's, it's a, a two-ply piece, which is then folded and glued on top of itself. Okay, so yeah, it's just folded. Yeah, so that really assists with the the strength of the pack, especially. Uh, started with the single-ply concept very briefly mm-hmm. for reasons you could imagine. It's it's very flimsy. So yeah. Quickly went to a double ply and have gone through many different changes, little things you don't think about, like like the size of the tabs and the shape of them and why there's little uh, perforations across some of the tabs and, and not others. Uh, it's things that you really don't think about until you kind of get into the lab and start cutting out some prototypes and seeing how that works. Yeah, the perforations are on the outside because you're more prone to pull that way, I would guess. It's a pretty thin sidewall on yeah. the side. So the first bat at making this product, I didn't know that you have to have this be the same width as the outside of the cans. Because when you put them in a liquor store, the two rails, you slide in the cans. If it's wider than that, it's going to mess with the one next to it. So that's kind of part of the issue with, uh, or the challenge with this these packs is the thin sidewall that that creates over here. Um, so you've seen some different... Um, Paper can carriers address that problems in different ways, but it's a very deceiving little pack. It looks like something that's you know very easy to whip up, uh, right. and it's very difficult to refine and get that get that really tuned in right. So it's two ply. You're not going to go like all Gillette Mach Five on us. <laughs> <laughs> get the three. Get the five, five layers. The five layers. Yeah, yeah, to yeah. the eight. Yeah. Did you ever yeah. see that? There's an onion. Like there's an onion thing. Is onion just is like this profit of things that oh yeah they, yeah they did they did the whole like when it was three they were like fuck it we're doing five <laughs> so i got my swear word in there <laughs> fuck it we're doing five blades and like it, it happened eventually yeah. and uh yeah so two layers and, and 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 this white is is that sandwiched in between or is that part of the top layer that's part of the top layer isn't it uh it's so one side of the pack is this craft board and the other side's the clay coat oh, okay which is the white and then we fold the clay coat on the inside um uh, but that can go both ways and it's kind of originally in 2019 was liking how the the natural look of the board was on the outside so that was kind of a a, a quick decision that you know we may go back on and kind of open it up to more vibrant prints but that's a little yeah, bit so about if the you construction flip it and put the clay cut on the outside you can do a different type of print on it cause yeah exactly and i just sent out a print plate on this and it's kind of inverting the colors on it so it's Everything that's brown there is now blue, and then the white is the what's what's blue on that pack. So it's kind of just showcasing some all the different ways mm-hmm. we can do some packaging on this, and mm-hmm. kind of really open that up to eyes of breweries, and kind of have some samples to show like that. So for now, it's just this one idea. It's just this one, four or six, and that's that's what you're focusing on, or you have other. We have a four pack, a six pack, and a three pack crawler as well. No, so none of the Austin beer works, 99 packs in the no, works. No, no, no. Yeah. That'll be a fun little right after the five ply. Yeah. We'll do that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I mean, it'd be like a uh, design for five people to pick up at the same time. Yeah. yeah. Perfect. <laughs> there's your, there's Getting your new little finger fools. holes. Yeah. There's your what I'm doing this joke. afternoon. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So in working with breweries, what are some of the things that they shared with you that they were their points of pain you're trying to solve? Yeah, I, you t- we touched on it briefly a little bit, but it's the kind of grueling process at the end of the line of somebody snapping on packs all day. Uh, but, you know, first and foremost is offering a sustainable can carrier. And it's not something that's widely adopted by breweries. And I want to make it more readily accessible. And that's that's the core of what we're solving here is is trying to bring in some recyclable paper packaging. 
I know, I'm compared to plastic. I'm struggling to do this manually, but once you do it once, it's it's a technique. Well, but that's when you have a full that's six the sitting there, yeah. Yeah. yeah, I know, I know. Yeah, I'm just trying it out. <laughs> um, but I'll, I'll tell you, that's a lot easier to pull than these. And these you can get good at. I mean, there's a technique, but like I just remember trying to like. Remember Watch we did those cans though. Yeah, I know. Remember we did the. Uh, <laughs> That'd be good for video. Yeah. <laughs> no. Remember we did the. Uh, I have to clean up. <laughs> The uh, the toast with the Secretary of State. Yes, I just I bring him up so I could pronounce his name correctly, Adrian Fontes. Oh, so nice. anyway, <laughs> um, I saw you just struggling to pull those apart quickly because you were trying to get those out. Yeah, so this is pretty easy. It's all about it's all about it's me getting my guy. shit right. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, fucking <Looking> guy. <laughs> I know how to take beers off pack text, but <laughs> you were. I saw you. You was like, oh, you just got to pull a peck muscle right there. Just <laughs> pulling that off. You guys have been out of the brewery game for a while here. <laughs> I guess. All, all I'm this little shocked. Gig here. I don't know yeah. what happened. <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember struggling, but I guess. So panic in your face. Panic. There was panic. <laughs> No, yeah. Uh, I, I, you know, I don't, uh, you know, beer goes to my house to die is what I say. I yeah. Do most of my drinking in the field. I, I leave it to the professionals to hand in me the, the beer. Nice, yeah. Pour the beers, you know, obviously. <laughs> Actually, I don't mind having a bunch of foam. I like it to gas off a little bit. Um, so you mentioned you're from Minnesota. Were you a, were you a, Legally drinking person when you were in Minnesota? I was. Okay. I was. <laughs> at the founding of this company. So, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So, uh, do you have any, any, um, we, we, we were out there for a craft brewers conference a number of years ago um, before they legalized hemp, um, unfortunately for us. But um, do you have any favorites there? I mean, I don't Sociable Cider, got to plug that one. It's <laughs> first and foremost, that's my cousin's. But um, mm -hmm. and are they in Minis are they in Minneapolis? In Minneapolis, yeah, yeah. So he's doing he's doing cider. That's his big specialty. So that's got to be the favorite. Yeah, that's cool. it. Just one. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna. <laughs> <laughs> that's the only place I ever drank alcohol. It was wild. <laughs> um, any any other. Uh, any other, uh, I mean, um, travels at all? Like, I mean, is it just these two states or is it just strictly Arizona that you're focusing on? Now? Yeah, only working with Arizona now. Um, obviously, it makes sense to kind of geographically expand for there, from there. Um, California being very close for one. Um, but, you know, you kind of have to start in one state and be close to where the product's being put on for the first mm -hmm. year or so and... Just make sure you have the right processes in place and understand the business more, kind of how to reach out to breweries, what problems I may see coming up, what are the, just just fine tuning from there. But mm -hmm. yeah. And so breweries like handholding too. <laughs> I mean, it's true. I'm not like, mm -hmm. this isn't an insult, but they do like when someone's available to answer questions sure. right there, yeah. drop by, take a look yeah. at what's going on. It's it's very, very helpful. Right. And, you know, it, it seems like something where I need to go meet John. I need to meet Adam, you know, mm -hmm. the, the brewers that are running these companies and associate kind of a face with what the company is and kind of mitigate some of those concerns. You can give me a call if anything's going on, whatever. I'm going to be the most accessible packaging supplier you're ever going to use. So <laughs> that kind of thing. Was there anything in your MBA classes at ASU that kind of made you change some of the things you were doing originally? Oh, you know, ab absolutely. Um, it's kind of a all-encompassing program, but specifically a, a pretty cool one where it was a decision modeling class, it's called. So you build linear programs in Excel and you can kind of test out different situations and, and model what's going on. And I did that for this product because we used to sell a tray and it had a billboard around all four sides of the pack. And I realized that was going to kill the product in last mile delivery because I could fit so many less packs in a box compared to the flat ones. And there wasn't an overwhelming you know, urge for trays versus flat packs with the breweries. But when I was running the numbers, the, the, the sense really piled up into dollars on, on what UPS in this case from Phoenix to Tucson or you name it, whatever that was. So that's kind of something that was 
a tool that I didn't have prior to the MBA and I can already see it having significant impact on, on business decisions like that. So cool. Yeah. Appreciate it. Yeah. <laughs> that's awesome. Uh, and I imagine it would also significantly complicate application. A tray. Yeah. You know, not, not quite as much, but maybe a little bit of that too. Yeah. <clears throat> so just throwing this out there, if a number of breweries just said, Hey, uh, I can see somewhere like Tucson where you could probably say, hey, well, if you get four or five of you guys to agree on the same packaging, it could really significantly reduce everyone's cost. Oh, absolutely. And for this to be stored somewhere is trivial. Like the the right. size and, 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 you know, like, um, I don't know. Like I, I, I see uh, we do have a, a number of breweries that, that package um, – and for them, I mean, it's all about, you know, saving some money because that four pack, that six pack um, would, you know, provide them a lot more money if it was sold and drank in the, in the, in the premise. But if it's, if it's, you know, um, packaged and if it's going to, you know, a handful of retailers or whatever. They're, or just right, off, off, off their bar. Right off their bar. Um, and so, and so, you know, the. You know, that would be something that we would help you talk to some folks about is, is sort of co-oping that idea, especially oh, since awesome it would be very cool for us to have like almost like a regional look to these. Oh, this throw this the is, guild this logo is, on there. You well, this it. is this is coming from, you know, southern Arizona. This is coming from, right. from right. northern Arizona kind of thing. Oh, no, and you're talking beer week already. I am. <laughs> I'm thinking about beer week. Yeah, obviously. Yeah. Um, but beer, you week, know, beer week and, and just just the breweries that want to. Um, brand regionally, um, and and that uh, want to uh, preserve identity across several breweries. I mean, we've had examples of spontaneous marketing like that. Um, this would be a perfect application, I think, um, especially if it's not going to cost them more than a pack tech. It's going to save them some um, some room, some shipping, some space, and yeah. doing the right thing. Yeah. Absolutely. And this is a cost savings day one, especially to Arizona breweries, because all of this product is based out of Phoenix on pricing. Mm -hmm. So it's UPS from Phoenix, whatever that rate is. So if you're PacTec suppliers in Missouri <coughs> and I'm priced the same as PacTec on a unit level, this is already going to be a cost savings to you. Mm -hmm. In addition to what we mentioned before about how much more efficient it is to ship this product than PacTech. And we're, doing the right thing. We're and, yeah, sustainability is <laughs> kind of a big deal. <laughs> we're, we're approximately in Phoenix as your distribution point. Uh, Central Phoenix kind of yeah. warehouse. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Okay. Um, well, um, what else would you like to add to what we've talked about? Otherwise, I'm going to include you in a couple of things that Andrew and I are going to talk about. You're welcome to Great. hang out and riff on that. Great. Um, is there, I didn't is there even anything, plan anything, so. <laughs> you know, we're going to, we obviously want to talk about Baja Beer Fest. Sure. Um, and we have that coming up. Um, and we have our um, regional meeting on Friday. Have we, have we, that was, that's not the thing I wanted to get solved before I took my uh, trip, but we need to understand where that's going to occur, right? He's writing it down. So that, <laughs> that means it's true. I write things down. Not forgetting that one. No. Yeah. Um, um, so we have Baja Beer Fest coming up. Um, are you available maybe to come to that meeting? Oh, at April 5th, but Friday? Yeah, absolutely. You're yeah, not getting I, married that I weekend. Will, no, no. That's August. We're all clear. If it's <laughs> oh, a yeah. you're getting August, married August 17th beer festival, I'm firmly out <laughs> on. But no, I'll, I'll, I'll be there. And I was at the last, last year's one too. It's nice to just kind of pass out samples and mm -hmm. get to meet who's there, that kind of thing. Yeah, Great. you mentioned you were at uh, Straw Beer too. Yeah, yeah. Just it's called Arizona Strong. <laughs> we have a whole year to fix that. <laughs> it's taking so me. I'm a I'm a newcomer to this one, so it's easy for me to remember just strong strong festival, strong beer. Festival. I know. He, he got it Arizona wrong. Arizona Strong. <laughs> <laughs> I know. It's so easy to remember. <laughs> hey, we're gonna get it. We're gonna get it dialed in. Yeah. Um, so this is Baja. Um, there's we'll have to reach out to some breweries down there. Um, uh, have you spent any time in, in Tucson at all, really? Yeah, I was there two weeks ago with Moto Sonora doing a trial run. So um, yeah. weekend before that, too, there for the Tucson Rodeo. So 
that was a blast as well. Have you have you had Sonoran hot dogs? I have. I don't think at the right experience. It was at the Diamondbacks game. Oh so. yeah, no, no, no. Okay, no. yeah, I. And I've only been here since last July, so okay. right, we'll only f- came here for the. We'll fix that. Yeah. Um, we'll if you've got some recommendations, I'm happy to. Have check you those have you out. talked to the folks down at Tap and Bottle? Scott and Rebecca. I have not. Okay. So those, they're, they're retailers. So they'll be able to give you some feedback on, on what, cause I don't know, like we'd be like, this is great. And we're like, no. And they'll pick out the, I yeah. don't think there's, you, you've mentioned that the, um, uh, the fact that these fit in all their shelves right. and, and there's no, right. uh, the, the, the packaging doesn't extend over the side of the can. I mean, th- and this is all well thought out, but like they'll probably have some questions <laughs> for you. Um, but you know, a lot of those, again, um, that's the kind of place that they'll have pack techs if you want to build. And, and I mean, this is, this to me is a very Tucson message <laughs> mm-hmm. as opposed to the pack tech, which is not right. You can't build a, an identity off of any of that stuff. And that's what, the, Oh no, 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 ma- no. We, we only use red pack, <laughs> sir. Oh, they use black pack techs. <laughs> Well, as a little story, <laughs> if you start with black pack decks and you have maybe four or five facings, it just becomes a black hole. Oh. So if you change the color to red, then it really helps that stand out on the shelf a little more. Just saying. Uh, that so works. Yeah, rainbows. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> wow. Well, I mean, this doesn't create a black hole either. Yeah. But if it's all black, you're like, oh, black well, cans, black pack decks. Wow. It, it really depends, you know, like. I see what you're saying, but there's there's only a hand. But I mean, for for the folks that really are proud of their artwork, which I'm I'm sure everyone's going to say they are. Um, <laughs> I mean that that profile is all about yeah. what you're displaying, not not Absolutely. what the pack tech is telling you. And I don't mean to rip on pack tech because I will. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. I mean, we've He's come like that sustainability yeah. is garbage. No, I mean, we we no, we've come a long way from from the plastic rings and and yep. um, you know, we were talking about the two piece pop tops and and then we went flirted with that for a little bit. I mean, this is all about streamlining. It's just what? getting better along the way. And, and this, there's Polypro, so Pack Tech isn't the only one. They're out there too. They use less plastic, so that's nice, right? Sure. I mean, less is better than more. <laughs> I guess in this case, I don't know what's going on. Any, anyway, um, Tucson, I think would be a, little, a little, good little adventure for you. Um, if you, if you want to put that in your calendar. Um, but, uh, I'm seeing it's, it's a uh, Baja Saturday, April 6th. Um, it is the eighth year. Um, we're a little bit behind in the marketing a little bit. So hopefully, uh, that, that festival will come through for us. Uh, we're just getting off the heels of Arizona strong. So you got it right. Yes. Um, you know, uh, you know, there are three or four festivals that really propel us through the whole year. And, and so um, Baja is very important for us. And it connects us with Tucson breweries, um, who I think will, will, will gravitate around maybe not just exclusively a, a product like this, but um, it, it gives them an opportunity to, to think about, like, how can we work together? I, I've noticed, you've noticed that – People have refocused on their businesses internally, and I think it's time for everybody to look again to what brought us the most strength is is working together, is collaborating together, is to being to communicating that to consumers, right? Um, so um, I think that would be a great what opportunity. Are, I, I do have a question for yeah. you. What's what's a good Tucson centric kind of design aspect of how do you, how do you showcase <laughs> Tucson, what are the what are the big elements to hit on something uh-huh. like that? Well, the sustainability part in itself, Tucson's a little more focused on that than Phoenix for sure. Hundred percent. Um the 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 their their residents are more likely to recapture water, be very mm. water conscious. So I don't I don't know what message I know I know I know paper products, you know, you're growing trees, you're there the 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 paper making process has got a lot of water. Uh, involved. Um, but I mean, I, I think I would hope that that's, um, industry standard is, is, is to, to reclaim a lot of that water. Sure. Um, my, my, I, we talked about, uh, Wisconsin, my dad's family, like was in the paper industry. Um, 
in Wausau, mm, you know, sure. at a time when um, you were expected to lose your hearing if you worked <laughs> in that job for 30 years, you got a pension. Pretty and, rough environment. And, you know, and, and, and um, everybody who grew up in a, anywhere near a paper mill, you, there was a smell <laughs> and a lot of things were not right about it. And this is, you know, 50, 60 years ago, even up to sure. maybe the seventies or eighties. But I, I would assume that the paper industry is, is, has gotten much tighter on that. Um, so th th it's the message about that. Um, but they're very, they're very proud of their, um, more so of anywhere in the state of their, um, Hispanic, um, the influence of that. I mean, Tucson's one of the oldest populated cities in, in North America. Oh, wow. Like continuously. Huh. Um, they have a UNESCO, um, food designation. Um, they're, they're What's a city, their, 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 their cuisine is, is recognized, um, by UNESCO, the, um, gastronomic, uh, their city of gastronomy. Yeah. Yeah. Huh. And, you know, um, um, Guerrero Canelo, uh, one of the Sonoran hot dog providers, one of, has won a James Beard Award. Um, oh wow! Um, the owner of that the founder of that place is having some health problems, so I don't, I don't. I, we all hope that he recovers. But to me, to me, it's also about the the street vendors. They have sure. a much more robust street vending um, situation, and and you know, you know, all all due respect to the to the brick and mortars that are doing um, Sonoran hot dogs. It's all about the stands for me. Um, just, just observation. Um, brick and mortar, they will steam the bun. If you're if you're at a trailer or a uh, uh, stand, it, they're going to grill it. I prefer the grilled. Hmm. Um, but yeah, no, deep, it's deep <laughs> depth of knowledge. Here. Yeah, you're the guy for the snoring hot dog uh -huh. recommendations. I see. I, I listened to a podcast called Ridiculous Crime, and they had an entire episode dedicated to snoring hot dog crime in Tucson. Oh wow! So you might want to check that out too. <laughs> There was there was uh, family drama. There was uh, burning down the neighbor's stand in the middle of the night kind of stuff. is very interesting. You should check it out. Yeah, you would love it. You should I, check I, it out too. I'm it's on fun. A new one. Only murders in the building. TV show. Yeah, if you're yeah familiar yeah. with that yeah. one. Just yeah. started that. So I love it. So the the, the they're they have a different. So so Arizona. Um, there are two routes where um, national. Oh geez! See, we put. How can I, I thought you hard? already fixed I it, bro? Fixed that. Why is this world so I cruel? Know. I don't know. Um, All right, well, screw that camera. I don't even like that camera anymore. We're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna make it. Do I'm gonna bring my little tiny cute oh, camera hot. over here? Well, so I bought I bought the external um, power supply. Yeah, which is like. It, it it can be powered by USB, but I figured since it's on the same side as the monitor. That, that's why it that, was heating up, and oh, so wow. I paid sixty dollars for a, a dumb thing that looks like a battery and plugs in, and I thought that was going to fix it. And, and like I, I did some tests, and I don't know. Maybe we just need a fan. No, no, right. that'll, add, that'll add, the audio. That would be all right. Nobody cares about the <laughs> problems that Rob has with it and, and, and equipment. I'm but, trying to help, man. I know. <laughs> but uh, back to what we were talking about. Um, there are two routes that touring bands go through Arizona, and it's you know I forty across Flagstaff, and um, ten, mm -hmm. and Tucson, right? So um, it seems like a lot of bands will skip Phoenix and go Flagstaff or Tucson. Oh, really? And so they they have a different oh down ten to eight across yeah. and skip Phoenix. Yeah, it's weird. Huh. This is the fifth largest uh, city in the country. Uh, it's all about it's here? all about getting to LA from at some point or, or California. Well, I think oh. it's a bunch of crap. <laughs> hey, we should celebrate the fact that there are differences in our state and they get different touring acts. Oh yeah. As an example, tonight, um, had I not oh, wanting God, to, what am I learning now? <laughs> I <laughs> wanted to, I didn't want to cut it this close, but like tonight, uh, the Buzzcocks are playing in Tucson and they're not coming to Phoenix. This is, Nobody cares about this, but I do. They're, 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 I was uh, going to say maybe I have to leave today to get to <laughs> Tucson tomorrow, but no, no I it's don't. It's, <laughs> it's, it's, it's tonight. I like that thing. Yeah. So I could still go. I can still go. Uh, so, so that's what makes that city different. Um, 
and, you know, and, and they're more in the, uh, they're, they're more embracing of uh, the Spanish, um, Mexico, um, I hate to say it, they're more, um, they have more colonial influences, like, mm. right? Um, so you will see elements that are Spanish architecture because of the missions down there. Sure. Um, we kind of just, Phoenix just kind of dilutes it all and, and, and sort of, you know, like we're the city of the future. You know, well, and but, so many transplants that are here too. It's really, I, I don't quite have a pulse on what the Phoenix culture is necessarily because it's such a collection of people from yeah. all over. So, so they have a, they have a much, they have a much more of an identity hmm. than we do here in Phoenix. Sure. You know, and so I don't know, like, I think there's a lot of, I, I feel the same way about some some of the you know northern arizona cities too um you know um but i don't know i i, I think um they're more there's 20 ish small breweries only only two or three of them figure into the uh, larger distribution scene so you know a majority of them are small independent driving around their products Sure. Delivering them, dropping them off, having those relationships, working with uh, the uh, five or six independent retailers out there. Hmm. And those, they matter more in that smaller town. It's only a half a million people there. Um, so I, I think that's what's appealing about it for something like this that sort of provides them an opportunity to talk about all of themselves together, working right. together. So I don't know. That's um, super cool. Well, it sounds like I need to get in touch with a Tucson designer and kind of workshop a pretty cool Hispanic heritage looking design to kind of showcase at Baja. Mm -hmm. I mean, the more options you have for what it looks like. Right. I mean, I know there's a cost to all of that. And you have to say, okay, well, I need 200,000 of these printed with this print right. and 200,000 with that print, and it can get expensive. But, you know, if you can work that out, it seems like, uh, yeah, more options. Great idea. <laughs> I mean, it's I, not I don't, my idea. I'm, I'm, this is the thing. Don't mean to put anyone on the spot, but like the, the applicator you're talking about um, versus the applicator that PacTech has or. The manual applicator at 300000 or $300 is uh, 300000 <laughs> uh, It's similar to PacTech. Okay. A little less expensive than a PacTech branded applicator but it really comes down to for small breweries that's awesome for larger breweries the automated one is key yeah. oh right. yeah no and no, that's, no doubt about it that's, that's taking all of my time until yeah. june is engineering that applicator mm. and giving that option yeah we, we talked about before nobody wants to be the guy at the end of the line snapping on pack text that by hand and you'd rather be the guy that's just what putting i'm trying in case to trace. yeah right <laughs> and, and, and this is something that's likely to be the most affordable automated solution out there. So I'm And that would be like four months of a dude working that position. Right, exactly. All of a the, sudden, you don't even need that guy. I mean, you need someone who knows how to fix Well, now things. that guy gets to brew beer and do the things that he's there for. You know, yeah. it's, it's the right, yeah. <laughs> well, great. Um, what other things did we have to talk about today, Rob? Wow, it's just, this keeps getting pushed off. Um, have you had a hangover lately? <laughs> a couple weeks, I'd say. Yeah, a couple weeks. You uh, go. still a couple weeks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I th this has been pushed on three shows. Like, uh, oh, nice. there's a USA Today report that people who have had COVID are reporting that they're having more difficulty <laughs> with their hangovers. I don't think that's a thing for me. I haven't really had a hangover per se. I've had. I don't really get hangovers. Yeah. Okay. Well, it's a thing, and it, it, it's just kind of funny because, like, we, you know, um, I think there's a perception that you know we can do no wrong in this industry for some people. Uh, if you've listened to the show, you understand what the challenges are and stuff like this. It's just another thing that our our business owners are facing, and and I hate to bring it up, they don't even know about this, maybe. <laughs> like, but like this, this is starting to be circulated as a thing, and it's all part of um, this 
a litany of things that are, are you know, the supply chain, coronavirus, uh, hangovers, know, the, the balance between the balance between <laughs> um, wanting to employ people and provide them things and 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 minimum wage and 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 uh, people deciding. Uh, after a major crisis in their life, they want to, you know, do other things. They want to prioritize other things. Um, people working um, from uh, home more, changing the dynamics of downtowns and office centers and where people choose to, you know, spend their time. Streaming culture, staying at home, DoorDash, that was just weed. one of those things, yeah. I weed, mean, you can only really use at home. But apparently it hasn't affected any of us, so I guess we don't have to care about this. Oh, my God. Can't say I noticed <laughs> it, yeah. I, I don't know. Like, um, um, I can't separate out maybe something like this or COVID or uh, long COVID or, or all that just from being old. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I will. I will say I haven't noticed this long COVID, but the first time going out downtown in Phoenix with the dry heat and the yeah. hangover afterwards, that was noticeable. Yeah. Coming from Minnesota, that was like, oh my god, I really need to be drinking more water. It's just immediate. I had some friends who visited <laughs> from Minnesota many years ago, and it was seventy-five degrees, and they're like, oh my god, it's so hot. I'm like, wow, <laughs> wow. Um. No, I, I mean, uh, uh, I have long johns on right now. Do you really? <laughs> yes. Jeez, it's going to be 80 degrees today. Well, well it was it <laughs> was 48 when I left my house. He drove his scooter. <laughs> what do you want from me? This is how um, it goes. Same thing with altitude. I mean, I, I mean, you're gonna if you get to Flagstaff, you're gonna be close to 8,000 feet. Right. That place is so dry. Um, so, but have you spent any time in northern Arizona? Yeah, I've been to Flagstaff a few times. I love yeah. to ski, so oh, went okay. up to snowball okay. a couple so times. You know about so it. yeah, I mean it's very re- re- reminiscent of Wisconsin, Minnesota. Yeah, except it's exactly. much drier, and the right. snow is just so much different. Well, I love Payson especially. Yeah, that one's really cool, and I, I like to fly fish too. So they have rivers and things through there, and it's just such a nice landscape with canyons and whatever. It's pretty cool. So right on. I just. Uh, Drove that way back from Flagstaff the other day. Oh, yeah? Yeah, I drove from Flagstaff to Lake Mary, um, that direction. Down through Strawberry. Pine Strawberry. Oh, yeah. Payson. Went to the Elks Lodge. Nobody cares. I went to <laughs> Elks Lodge. And then um, I hadn't driven that way back to Phoenix in, in years because uh, we had some my, – my in-laws had property out that way, and they sold it years ago. So I haven't done that drive in a while. But. It's a nice hey, drive. Listen, uh, Sounds like we all love Arizona. You're going to spend some time in Tucson with us. Um, we got the Baja Festival coming up. Um, you know, um, we didn't we didn't really talk about beer because this is not a beer podcast. It's, it's a, a podcast, podcast about, about beer. beer. Good job. Thanks. We're out. All right. Thanks. Thank you, guys. Appreciate it. I, I was just gonna thank Jen for being here and stuff like that. And like we don't have to. She was like, "Oh, Rob decided it's over. Bye." <laughs> <laughs> It's over. I, I, got I can tell. <laughs> <laughs>